in this tutorial and next we will be solving home assignment number 2. which is on basic electrostatics and vector calculus. Problem number 1 of this assignment says for a given field f which is a function of x and y is equal to 2 x i plus 3 y j the dot product f dot d s where d s represents an infinitesimal area a on a cylinder of radius r. So, we wish to find uh, the, the uh, f dot d s product. So, this is an infinitesimal area on a cylinder of radius r at an angle phi and we are using cylindrical coordinates. So, if I make a picture of the cylinder, we are trying to look there is a force field f and we are trying to find the dot product of f dot d s where this is small area is at an angle phi at radius r. So, you can see in cylindrical coordinates this area is actually going to point in the direction of s unit vector in cylindrical coordinates. Its height is d z or delta z. This angle is d phi. Therefore, this area magnitude. So, if I write d s magnitude is going to be r d phi which is this distance let me show it by red the the curve distance of the curved surface and the height is d z. So, the magnitude is going to be r d phi d z and the direction is d s in the s direction. So, d s area is r d phi d z in the s direction. And therefore, when I calculate f dot d s, it is going to be 2 x i dot s r d phi d z plus 3 y j dot s unit vector r d phi d z. Now, I know in cylindrical coordinates on the surface x is going to be r cosine of phi, i dot s unit vector is cosine of phi, y is r sine of phi, j dot s is sine of phi and therefore, f dot d s is going to be equal to 2 r cosine square phi plus 3 r sin square phi and then we have from outside r d phi d z which becomes equal to r square 2 cos square phi plus 3 sin square phi d phi d z which by using the identity that cosine square phi plus sin square phi is 1. I can also write as r square 2 plus sin square phi d phi d z and that is the answer. For question number 2, the answer of the, the question is the flux of the field in problem 1 over a quarter of a cylindrical surface extending from phi equals to pi by 4 to phi equals 3 pi by 4 is. So, what we are now asking for let me again make the cylinder and we are taking the length of the cylinder to be 1 over this length of 1 we want to integrate from phi equals pi by 4 up to phi equals 3 pi by 4. 
So, it will be somewhere like this over this cylindrical surface which is on the back side we wish to calculate the flux passing through this cylindrical surface. So, what we need to do is integrate f dot d s over the surface which is going to be equal to integral d phi is from pi by 4 to 3 pi by 4 d z is of length 1. So, it is from whatever length let us say 0 to 1 because there is no z dependence it does not matter what the initial and final points are r square 2 plus sin square phi. Now, z integral since there is no z dependence gives me 1 and therefore, I get this flux is equal to integral d phi from pi by 4 to 3 pi by 4 r square comes out 2 plus sin square phi which is equal to 2 r square times 3 pi by 4 minus pi by 4 that is the first term plus r square integration 1 minus cosine of 2 phi over 2 d phi from pi by 4 to 3 pi by 4 which is equal to 2 r sorry this is r square r square times pi by 2 plus r square by 2 inside I am going to get pi by 2 from the first term minus 1 over 2 sin 2 phi pi by 4 and 3 pi by 4. And this integral you can easily do and the final answer then comes out to be 5 pi r square by 4 plus r square by 2. The integrals are quite simple to do, so I will leave them for you. Question number 3 is if the density of the matter distributed in a part of space is given as. So, let me write density which is a function of x, y and z. I could also write it as density r, theta and phi is given as c x square modulus of z. What it means is in the lower plane on z negative values or z positive values is it is positive and x it depends on x square. So, density is all positive. It is given as c x square mod z where c is a constant. The mass of an infinitesimal volume element in spherical polar coordinates is given as. So, we want to find mass of a small volume element. Let me again make a picture. You recall that the volume element in spherical polar coordinates is going to be between theta and d theta and is going to look like this. where the distance this is small d r. You are moving along d theta and when you move in the x y axis is the angle is d phi. So, the volume element is given as d v is equal to r square d r sin theta d theta d phi. The density in terms of r theta and phi is given as c x square mod z which I am going to change into spherical polar coordinates. So, this will become c r square sin square theta cosine square phi and then z is nothing but r, r is again only a positive number. So, cosine theta could be called positive or negative. So, I will put it more mod cosine of theta and therefore, the small mass is going to be equal to rho times d v which is c r cubed this term here and this term here become r cubed times sin square theta cos square phi mod cosine of theta and then you have r square dr sin theta 
d theta d phi, which I can then finally write as c r raised to 5 sin cube theta mod cosine of theta cosine square phi dr d theta d phi. That is the mass element. Question number 4 then asks mass of the sphere of radius r centered around the origin with density distribution c x square mod z is. So, now we are asking if I have a sphere centered at the origin of radius r with this mass density rho r theta and phi is equal to c x square mod z which we have already written as c r cubed sin square theta cosine square phi modulus of cosine theta. What is the total mass of a sphere of radius r centered at the origin? We have already calculated small mass element of a small volume element here, which is given as we have written in the previous page. I am going to copy it from here c r raised to 5 sin cube theta modulus cosine of theta cosine square phi dr d theta d phi. And therefore, the total mass is going to be an integral of this. Okay. Now, let me write the integral separately. So, total mass m is going to be given as c is a constant which comes out integral dr r raised to 5 goes from 0 to r integral d theta sin cube theta modulus of cosine of theta theta goes from 0 to pi and integral 0 to 2 pi cosine square phi that is the answer. Now, I can do these three integrals separately. So, 0 to r dr r raise to 5 gives me r raise to 6 over 6. Similarly, the integral over phi which is cosine square phi I forgot to write a d phi here d phi 0 to 2 pi is nothing but 1 half integral 0 to 2 pi 1 minus cosine 2 phi d phi which gives me nothing but pi. The final integral is d theta integral let me do that on the next page which is 0 to pi sin cube theta modulus of cosine theta d theta which I can write as to make life easy 0 to pi sin square theta modulus of cosine theta cos theta sorry sin theta d theta which is nothing but integral 0 to pi sin square theta modulus cosine of theta d of cosine of theta with a minus sign outside. Let us now define x as cosine of theta then I have this integral equal to minus 1 to minus 1 sin square theta will become 1 minus x square modulus of x dx which is nothing but minus 1 to 1 1 minus x square mod x dx. Let us do this integral. So, I have minus 1 to 1 1 minus x square mod x dx. Now, mod x on the side mod x is equal to minus x for x between minus 1 and 0 and is equal to x for x between 0 and 1. So, I can write this equal to this integral therefore, becomes equal to minus 1 to 0 1 minus x square times x with a minus sign outside d x plus 0 to 1 1 minus x square x d x. These are very easy integrals to perform 
and the final answer they give you when you do all the integral comes out to be one half. Another way of looking at it is since mod x is even about x equals 0, I could have written this as 2 times 0 to 1, 1 minus x square x dx which will give me 1 half. So, the total mass therefore, if I collect all the terms is going to be c times r raised to 6 over 6 times 1 half times pi, which comes out to be pi c r raised to 6 over 12 and that is your answer.